Hi everybody, Joe Patty here, and I want to tell you something today. I haven't been painting a lot lately, I've been really busy, and I don't want to sit here and say how life took over or whatever, because it always does for everybody, and I'm glad it does, because we're all just busy living life, you know, we all got our own stuff going on or whatever, but I want to share some stuff with you that I have learned over the years, and that's kind of more my passion than anything else. I love to paint. But what I love to do more than paint is to show everybody how to do it. You know, I want to teach people how they can do stuff. And I don't mind sharing absolutely everything that I know. And what I went to school, I went to school for art, whatever, but it's not, it's not about that. You know, what makes you an artist is, is you just doing your thing. You learn more in the field and you learn more out doing stuff and experimenting and doing things that you enjoy than you could ever learn in school. And I want to share with you some of the stuff that I did learn in school. And it won't cost you anything. And I'm going to show you what it cost me because I had to pay for it. But I went into art school because I already knew a lot about art. But I wanted to know everything I could know about it. And I just really enjoyed it. Um, I want you guys to have fun. I'm not always going to be here, you know. So I just want to share everything that I have known over the years. And how fun art can be. We need more artists like you guys out in the world. I want you guys to keep painting and stay happy and do all those things you've always wanted to do, you know, when it comes to art and stuff. So let's get started, everybody. And today I want to show you some things that I really like. And I want to show you some things that I know you're going to really like. And then I want to show you some projects that I know you're going to absolutely love. Let's get started, everybody. All right, everybody. As you can see, I got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff on this table. And I'm so excited to show you this stuff. So let's just get started. I usually say like you can fast forward this part or that part of the video, but this is a very informational video, especially if you're just into art or painting. And if you're not into art or painting, then just skip this video altogether. I appreciate the thumbs up. Okay, first off, these wood circles. I got these on Amazon. They came in this bag. I love these. They're coaster size. And look how beautiful that is. You don't even have to paint over them if you don't want to. They would make nice geodes, though. You could even cut out in the middle or something. But all you need is a clear coat on these, and they're beautiful. They make nice coasters or nice gifts. All right, everyone, what's up next? This. Let's talk about this. Let me come around and see if you can see the sparkles on here. Okay, so here, this angles and the camera doesn't do it much justice, but I put some, there it goes, Put some glitter on here and I'm going to show you what I did. You can use this kind of glitter for background or negative space or whatever you want to do. And I, it seals your wood too. It seals your project. So let me show you what I did. I'm sorry that the glitter doesn't show up that much on that camera, but this is what I used. It's uh, Harvest Gold Rust-Oleum and I got it at a hardware store. It's really nice to have. You, it, God, it'll last forever too. Look at that. <laughs> you can do pretty much anything with that. You can paint baseboards or uh, hallways, bathroom walls, anything. That stuff is just super nice. Okay, up next, I want to show you something. I found this at the hardware store, and I thought, how cute would that be instead of just hanging on the wall by itself? So when you guys find something like this, you can put it and incorporate it with your artwork. Like here, I was going to paint, paint some birch trees on here or whatever. And then you can seal that in there. You can even seal it with resin if you don't want to put the little screws through because sometimes your artwork might be too thin. But you also want to be careful like when you do something like this, if people come by and they take their coat or their purse off, this will be on there, but you don't want this to flip on and off the wall. So you got to make sure that you have a pad right here or something that's connected to the wall so it doesn't keep flipping off. But this is really cute stuff when you find little doorknobs and things like that. You'd be surprised what you could make with the door handle and stuff. So it's a fun thing to do. Make whatever you want. And speaking of door handles and knobs and stuff, let's talk about this. I made this drawer a while back. And I just, uh, not the drawer actually, the, I painted this. And I just painted, I poured paint on it and I put some black on there and some gold sparkles or whatever. And all I did was put a handle on here, like a little knob. And it's really cute. It looks like a door knocker. 
And that can really up your game when you go to make something and you want to put your own personal touch on it. So you could be surprised if you go look around, you can go to um, not just like art shows, but you can go to craft markets and you can go to antique malls and garage sales. You'd be surprised. And this is so cute. I love my little line. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. So cute, everybody. Put your personal touch on stuff. Let's talk about this. I got this for $2 the other day at Home Depot. And you just, I, you could use this for art or whatever, but I think that what I'm going to use it for mainly is for cleaning the bathroom toilet. I have a hard time getting my stuff up underneath there to clean it. And it's just, I know it doesn't have anything to do with art, but I just wanted to show this to you. Um, it's called the 360 Spray Upside Down. And I got it in the garden section at the Home Depot. And this is really cool because it sprays upside down and it doesn't like drip all over and well, it drips, but... Okay, so you can, it sprays upside down. Let me tighten this. And you can just get underneath that toilet bowl rim. And I love this. So, those of you that just uh, have kids all the time, you need to clean your toilet all the time. There you go. <laughs> okay, this diamond glaze. I love this. I use it on a lot of stuff. Let me show you that up close. You can also get this at Amazon. I ordered it on Amazon. I do have an Amazon link. You don't have to go there and order anything off my stuff. You guys, are, you know, just go to Amazon and order it. It's called Diamond Glaze. And this, I put Diamond Glaze on. It looks like resin. It's bright. It's hard, rock hard. It's shiny. And it's great for almost any project that you just want to cover and make it really pretty. And it's true. It's like diamond. Really shiny. Shine bright like a diamond, everybody. Next. I bought this also at the hardware store. When, um... You guys get uh, some of that pearlescent paints and stuff. Sometimes, like in my metallic paints and little things like that, and I have one that's uh, a pearl white. I have one that's pearl white, and I like this kind of stuff. If you go to where they um, sell furniture paint, and sometimes that's better. You know, um, this is really pretty, and it's really durable. And I like that better than just buying pearl white for 50 cents at Walmart or whatever. Sometimes you do have to get, spend a little more money if you want something to be, to flow really good or have it turn out really nice. And on that note, I want to tell you something, what I made with this. Okay, you can make your own homemade rose gold paint. You don't have to buy rose gold. If you have any kind of copper and you have some pearl white, you mix the two together. And I'm going to come around and show you. You mix the two together. And look what you get. Look at that beautiful rose gold. That is just beautiful, you guys. I'm not ready for painting or whatever. But it's just beautiful. So, so pretty. Now you got your own homemade rose gold. And the more copper you add, the darker the rose gold. And the more white pearlescent you add, the lighter the rose gold. Really glossy and pretty and metallic-y. So now you got a metallic rose gold that's just blooming, everybody. Just blooming. So pretty. You really make some spring flowers and stuff with that. That is so pretty. I love my own homemade mixture of my rose gold. You guys are going to love it, too. I know you will. I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> Speaking of paint, then, let's talk about this. I want to show you guys something. I get these. I'm a spray painter by heart. I like to do a lot of spray painting. I love my rattle cans. Matter of fact, I just ordered a whole bunch of paints, a line of paints for summer. And I'll show you pictures of those or when it gets here, I'll show you that. But um, I can at least maybe throw in a few pictures at the end of this video so you can see what I ordered because I love that stuff. But you can get this and you know what? You can even paint this in the background. You can paint your board first and seal it. You don't have to wait long for it to dry. I got my silver and my gold glitter. And another good thing about this is if you do any resin work or whatever, you could just spray it right on your resin work on your project with your, you don't even have to wait for it to dry. You just spray it right on there, you know, and you could mix it around with the brush or whatever. And speaking of mixing around with the brush, these brushes are good with resin. Um, I got this at Walmart for like, I don't know, it's just a couple bucks, but it's over where you buy grills and cooking stuff. It's just a little silicone brush, and you can put that to spread your resin with. Or if you want to 
be more handy dandy without spending any money. I'm sure you guys, you're all animal lovers. Most of you have animals at home. This is my dog brush. I can spread the resin with that and I can spread the resin and make designs with this. Anything that's silicone. I even have a dog toothbrush that puts on your finger and you know, I would just get back there and clean my dog's teeth. You can get the corner and the edges with, with your project with that resin with just by using that tiny little brush, little toothbrush. You can get the edges of your board or whatever. Another thing too, when your resin's not quite dry and cured all the way, but soft enough to cut. This is, um, I got this is also in the cooking section where I would like, if I make a cupcake, I could scrape the cupcake, a piece of chocolate over the cupcake and have little bits of chocolate over it. When well, I can have like your clear resin or any color resin, you can have little chunks and pieces. And then when your piece is almost dry and say you wanted to add something to it for dimension, you could just dip your hand in that uh, resin pieces that you cut off earlier and dribble them on your painting or whatever. And it's really kind of cool. Okay, next. Also like if resin work, if you guys want to keep using stir sticks, you can always use paint sticks. Like I use these paint sticks. And what you can do is, let me show you. If you have the stir sticks, you don't have paint sticks, you can cut this like that. Cut your paint stick, your little stir stick, and that way you can get in the bottom of your cup when you're mixing and stirring. You can get all around there really good. Instead of just having it like that, it's nice to cut it. Now you're really scraping it. And if you don't want to keep, if you run out of stir sticks and you don't want to keep stir, using stir sticks or whatever, you could take a paint stick or a stir stick and you put resin on the end of it like up to here and then just let it dry. You know, keep like you can brush it like that and then just set it like in a cup or something, even upside down, it doesn't matter. And just let it dry. And then when it dries, you have a like a plastic stir stick and you use it all the time. You can just take your rag when you're done and wipe that other resin off because you got your hard resin underneath and you can use the same stick for every project you do all right let's talk about what's next this is a little tip that I learned from Doris at DF designs she does a lot of resin work and if you guys want to go check out her channel it's really cool she does lots of little experiments with resin and it's kind of fun to watch but what I do, since I don't work a lot with resin, I work a lot with acrylic paints. I get all these wash rags or rags that you can get at the store. And I just fold them up and pile them up like this so I can grab them one at a time. And I set them, get them all with soapy water, a little bit of warm water, and just keep it on my tray. And I keep that off to the side when I'm painting and I can just wipe my hands. And what Doris does is she keeps hers with, with rubbing alcohol because she's working with sticky resin and then she'll wipe her hands to do many different things, especially if you have your gloves on, because if you have your gloves on, you want to go pick up the torch, you got, you know, get it all sticky and you don't need to protect your torch and constantly put tape over it and stuff because, I don't know, it's time consuming. But if you get this a, a rag with soap or resin, when you work with resin, you want to use rubbing alcohol and then otherwise just use water with just a small amount of soap on it for your acrylic pouring or painting, whatever. <laughs> next talking about gloves I said this before and I'll say it again these are the best gloves you could ever buy I got them on Amazon I love these they're like little diamond things on here like grippies they're the best gloves and I can reuse them I got a hundred in this box but the thing is is that I could wear these same pair of gloves if I do resin work and I take these gloves off and I set them aside the next day, I could still use them. I could use them on three or four projects or more. It's, it's amazing how these gloves just last. I just love these gloves. You guys really should, if you buy anything for yourself, really should try these gloves. They're just absolutely wonderful. All right, next, speaking about resin still, I wanted to show you two other things. Or a few other things. While we were talking about torching, I was going to tell you that a lot of times I see a lot of people, they get too close to their, to their project and... It's just, oh boy, I don't know, it's really worrisome. But the thing of it is, is that you don't need that bl that much blast, you know. I use this sometimes, too. And it's just a tiny little torch. I paid two bucks for it. And I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Well, I don't think I can show you how much it comes out. But 
this is perfect. You can just go over your project. You're not going to overheat one area too much. And I just love this little thing. Very handy dandy. <laughs> And then what I did was I made a resin shot glass. Doris makes those too, by the way. And I just made me one little shot glass with some leftover resin I had. And it's great for my Q-tips and just little things I can have set off to the side. Or maybe a paintbrush or something that I'm working on. I know I'm going to be working on soon. You can just have your own little something-something sitting there. And then I got this on Amazon. My little seahorse mold. It's a silicone mold. And uh, that's going to be so pretty. I'm going to do some mermaids and seahorses. And they're really pretty. And then this was a gift somebody had actually sent me, since I'm always saying, you know, wear your own ruby slippers, do things your way. But isn't that pretty? Somebody sent me that. A little ruby slippers necklace. I thought that was cute. Now I want to talk about this. This is the best primer you're ever going to find. I paid about $6, $7 for it. Maybe you can find it cheaper. I did get it at the Home Depot. But it's full coverage in one shot. And this is the best primer ever for anything. You guys should try that. Another thing I want to talk about is I don't like everything really glossy and shiny all the time. Sometimes I just like a nice satin finish. I don't want the glare, you know. Like, Of course, when you do resin work, that's one thing. But if you just do a painting, you don't have to put a gloss finish on everything. Sometimes just a satin finish or even a flat finish is, is good enough for your painting. It looks really authentic. It, it's really pretty. You don't have to have that really gloss on everything. So don't ever think you need to have that much shine on something. Another thing when I was talking about little stuff you can find around the house to do stuff with, this is good too. Like if you're, instead, if you don't have a straw and you guys have babies or something, you can put this up against your painting and you can blow your paint in certain direction without you know, blowing it all over. Maybe you just want to zero in on one little spot. One of those little snot sucker things for kids. I don't know. <laughs> Another thing you can do to add to your design is buy some bubbles. You blow bubbles for your kids and this and that. But if you have a painting and it's still wet or dry, I don't know. I've never even tried it. I'm trying to remember how I use it, wet or dry. But you try, experiment. So you just take that out and you blow bubbles and the bubbles land on your painting it's really cool. They got these really cool circles, and sometimes they're actually opalescent looking once they dry. So blow some bubbles, everybody. Have some fun with your painting. Another thing is I use cheesecloth all the time, especially with Floetrol. And I really don't use that much Floetrol, but when you do, but you should use the cheesecloth and strain it. But after you do that, for any of your paints, all my colors have a little piece of cheesecloth right under here because... I want, I don't want any paint globs anywhere or anything. I can't get this off. My hand is all, I need my rubber grippy, everybody. I usually have it sitting right here, but <laughs> the cheesecloth is stuck to it. But anyway, here we go. Look at that. So, see my cheesecloth? It's just on the top part. And that way, any paint that goes through there, it's getting strained. Again, because if you strained your flow trawl once or whatever, then you can strain your paints again before they come out. That way everything's pretty smooth because we all have a hard enough time trying to keep cat hair and stuff out of our paintings. But paint globs are a big problem too, sometimes. <laughs> See, now let's talk about this. I got these. These are really cool. It was called hibiscus. I think I got a green one too. Um, I ordered these off Amazon. And it's just cellophane. You could put cellophane in your paintings. It's really pretty. It's Easter time coming up, and I thought that you know you could probably find this at Walmart. That somebody's make you can make Easter baskets with them, but it's really pretty. I love that cellophane. You could do a lot with it. You can even crinkle it up and make it 3D or whatever. And speaking of 3D, when you're making a painting, I've actually been known to take foil and you crumple it up, and you can make rows or lines with foil, and then you can paint over that white first and then put your colors on and it stays in your resin or stays in something and you get some 3d mountains in the background or whatever okay now this is i love this this is so lovely i have to actually come around the other side of the camera because i want to show you this all right got this on amazon my barnabas gold <laughs> and look how pretty this is 
the stuff that you guys could do with this, the fun you could have with this. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Look at that. Oh, my God. It almost looks like a uh, metallic cheetah. <laughs> How pretty is that? Oh, my God. Just remember that Barnabas gold. It is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, my God. I can't even stop looking at it. It's wonderful, you guys. It's a foil. And then when you work with foil, too, you should put down, like, you have a piece of wax paper you put on it, and you use something like this, a flat thing, and you can get that on there pretty good before you go, you know. Then you take your brush, off, and then you brush away the extra stuff. But, oh, I've got some... My little cup tipped over. I got some little, uh, rubbing alcohol on there. That's not a big deal. Okay, what's next, everybody? Just trying to hurry so I can get through this video so I can show you guys everything. I'm just going to blast some of that off there and get, start getting it dry a little bit. It's going to be okay, everybody. I promise it'll be all right. <laughs> and this is a good pen, this kind of pen. for uh, It's an adhesive pen. For when you're working with foils or metal leaf or silver leaf. This is the Mona Lisa. I got that on Amazon too. It's a really nice little pen. It's like a little speed ball. You know, it's acid free. It's a really nice little adhesive pen to use. And that way you can, like when I do trees or whatever, I can do a pour of the sunset, whatever. And then, or winter scene. Winter scene would be perfect. You do like a, a bluish grayish background with some snow or whatever and then you want to draw some trees you know you could draw them out in pencil first at the bottom of your painting and you can just put the the glue pen on there and then you could put your foil on it and then you rub the this over it to flatten it out and then you take your brush and brush it out and you got some really pretty looking trees with any color foil you choose or whatever all right then there's one last thing i want to talk to you guys about i want to show you guys this um, I just put some gesso on here. This is just a board because it's just an example. I just want to show you something. I'm not actually making a painting. I just want to show you something. I want to show you guys how I make my birch trees. Now let me go get my other pictures so I can show you that I made that a couple years ago. I made this a really long time ago. And then I put some salt in there. And that's just salt. <laughs> but it's really pretty, you guys. And I want to show you how you can make your birch trees. So what I did was Paint the background white, okay? And then you can get different size colored tape, okay? And I'm just going to do one for it because I'm just showing you an example. I'm just doing showing you something. And you don't want to do it straight up and down because we well, you could do one or two straight up and down, but then you go like this. Just put them at an angle like that. And then you can get a thinner one and a, a smaller, a thinner ones look like they're in the background, you know, because you want different sizes because then they'll look like they're farther away or whatever. You can put another one there. I'm not going to go all the way up because, like I said, I'm just showing you something. Okay, now, what you do is you paint that. Hang on a second. Let me just get a spray can because acrylic will take too long to dry. Hold on. Okay, this is just what I got offhand, everybody. Real quick like a bunny. Okay, so say you want some fluorescent green grass here. Let's just go that like that. All right, now, I got to clean that nozzle. You just want some little background stuff. I have to get rubbing alcohol on that one. I gotta clean that one. Okay, let me get a different one. Actually, you know what? I'll just keep using this. It needs to be cleaned out, but anyway, let's just show you something here. You can use any colors you want. You're gonna use a green grass, a blue sky. Maybe you want some um, brownish grass or whatever because it's winter time or whatnot. And I'm going to let this dry just for a second. Help it along here with my spray can. And then I'm going to show you something. Let that dry. Give it about three to five minutes. I'll be right back. I'm just about ready to get started, everybody. But I want to tell you, too, always leave a little trash can by where you're going to be working. Because... It's just nice to have that right there. You're going to need, be surprised how often you need to throw something away. <laughs> All right, so now let me get a little scraper here. To get ready was I just mixed up a little black paint with just a little, just one little splash of water just so I could make it a little more fluid. But that's all I did. You get your black paint and you get your white paint. You don't have to mix it up or anything you know, like I did. This is just for the purpose of uh, showing you guys something. 
Okay, so I got my white here. All right, now. All right, everybody, here we go. I am gonna take a little bit of this black and move it over here because I want white, black, and gray. You can have any shade of gray you like, you know? Like a little white gray, I just wanna mix it up like that. And this is my palette, that's all it takes. Now, like I said, what makes this really dimensional and really fun painting is to have different size tape and go on in different little angles. Now, what you're gonna do is take anything like an old credit card or plastic card, or even like I have actually been known to cut up little of those um, silicone plasticky cutting boards that people get, the little medium sized ones. You can buy them for a couple bucks. You can have a couple of squares. I have them in different sizes. Okay, so you're gonna take this um, after you sprayed that, now you're going to take this off here because it's all white underneath there. Usually things don't go right when you're hurrying, so. <laughs> anyway, all right. Now, I'm going to take my credit card and I'm going to show you guys something. I look like this. Let me use this, put that there so you guys can see that here. Um, okay, you're going to dip your credit card like this. And dip it in the gray, okay? And you're just going to take it and put it on the edge, and you're going to give it a swipe like that. Take it. Give it a swipe. You're going to turn around. You're going to give it a swipe and dip it on the other side. See? Look at that, you guys. Oh, my God, look at that. Isn't that not a beautiful birch tree? This is just the beginning. You could, it's so. Oh, my God, you can do this with your kids. How fun is that? Okay, and then you get want a little bit of black in there, too. So... You want to take the black and go over the gray at a different angle like you don't want to go right on top of the gray all the time you want some black spots and go down there like that and then I can start up here all right anyhow I'm just trying to show you guys you're getting the idea put a little more white in there if you got too much of a black spot You don't have to do it this way. This is just, I'm just showing you something. Okay. And that'd be really cool, you guys. And like I said, you have different angles, different sizes, and then you can put your tape also, like on the sides to put some tape to make little branches. You can do it your way, any way you want to, everybody. They're beautiful birch trees. And you can even, when it's done and dry, you get some yellow paint out. Well, now I got my fluorescent paint, whatever. So I'm going to have yellow flowers on a birch tree. And you just dip your finger in there, you and you can just, put little you know after it's dry of course because I'm mixing the paint now and you just put these little leaves and you can put them down there like they're falling off the tree and they're just everywhere you know it's really really cute you can use a sponge or anything that's round on the end or you can even just take your paintbrush like these this kind of paintbrush here and what you want to do is just it'll have like different dots like that you know so like trees that are blown in the wind and you got different little leaves that just fell all over the place. It'll be really pretty. And I know that looks like a mess, but that's because my paint is mixing. But I'm just trying to show you guys something and you get the idea. It's a lot of fun. And when you're all done, if you don't feel like signing anything, you don't feel like you have a really good signature, dip your thumbnail or something, because I've done this a lot, in the paint. Dab some of the paint off and then you can sign it like that. And there's your thumbprint. <laughs> Nobody can say they did it, right? All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I'm so glad to have you along today. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you again soon back in the studio. Arrivederci, everybody.